This week in Chaos Craft, we ask the question, can the Neural Nuts learn to play King of the Hill? Find out right now. Training to allow bots to affect other points. They are evolving. Yes. There's so many bots of the B. Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> they have got, they have figured this out. Jeez. Hey, welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging on that like some people do. Wait till the end of the video. No, they figured this thing out. <laughs> so this week, we're going to go over the results of this experiment, a little bit of follow-up on last week's experiment, and the new targeting system. Before we get into all that, I'm going to ask you, please uh, like, share, subscribe, smash that button. And if you're interested, hop on Patreon and give us uh, some support here so we can keep these servers running. Previously on Chaos Craft. Ah, uh, nuts. I got a pretty good idea why they're blind now, and uh, I'm going to cry. That's wasted a day and a half of our time now. Mother of Pearl. Hey, they're circling it. This one seems to actually be tracking it. My god, they're all tracking it so well, they're pushing it around. It's like a swarm of gazelles or uh, birds or something like that. Flocking in the air. It's beautiful. They really have figured out how to snipe on this guy. The poor bee. This is what happens when you let the patrons into uh, <laughs> to your game. They steal the bee and wander off with them. After that happened, we put them back on trading chickens. So we had four spawn blocks, each spawning between one and three chickens. We also spawned some zombies in there to train them to ideally dodge zombies. The dodging part didn't really work that well, but the chicken part worked pretty well. At one point, I added more zombies to see if that would help encourage them to dodge the zombies. But unfortunately, the zombies aren't that smart and would clump up and attack a single one. They would even walk into others while trying to attack the one and completely ignore the ones they were literally touching. This didn't make for a great experiment because a lot of them were just getting ignored and didn't have any threats, while well, a very select few of them were getting threatened. So not all things were equal for the bots that spawned in. I didn't see any short-term fix that could be used to make this more fair and more scientific, so we decided to open it up and try the King of the Hill experiment. We started really simple with just a basic structure that they could climb without any real obstacles like lava in the way. There was lava on the outside that would stop them from running outward. It did help speed up the process a little bit. At first we saw the same random behaviors we always do. Spinning, jumping, walking in random directions. A few of them made it up there, but it seemed that it was just random. They just learned to hop and walk in a direction until they hit something, and then they would stop because of a wall. Others would just overshoot the castle as a whole. Some of the community members that tuned into the live stream wanted me to reward just for climbing the Y axis, but I felt that would reward the ones that overshot the castle a little bit too easily. I'm glad I stuck with that decision because it wasn't too long until this happened. If this guy doesn't overshoot it, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got one. We got some real... You know, I just realized they're going to take a lot of fall damage, which kind of sucks. But we've got your, your, these guys. Look at this. This is, this is intelligent behavior to a capacity. They're overshooting it, but it's got some behavior. We may need to flatten off the top just a little bit. See how see how it gets really pointy at the top and they die, like they hop off there and die? We flatten it out just a little bit, but that's pretty cool. I think this guy's going to overshoot it. No, 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 he's coming back. Nice. Gen 2, and we're already, we're already here. I love this. We had a bit of a discussion on whether or not we should flatten up the tower. Everybody seemed to want to make it steeper and encourage fall damage. I held back on that mainly because... It takes a long time to get that type of precision. I'm impressed that they actually got that high already. 
And so I wanted to train them to hone in as well as they could to a normal surface and then use the more advanced species to train against to try and teach them more advanced things like not moving around once they reach the top. Of course, the ability to stop on top when they reach a certain point probably wouldn't have happened so easily without the mutatable activator functions that I added last week. For more information on that, look at last week's video. At this point, a couple of species had learned how to climb and get up there, but none of them had really figured out how to sustain themselves up there. At least until this happened. Training to allow bots to affect other points. They are evolving. Yes. There's so many bots of the bee. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> they have got, they have figured this out. Jeez. What has it been, guys? Uh, I mean, we probably didn't get going until at least 2.15, maybe 2.30 my time, so that means probably... Where is the time? How long have we been going for? We've been going for so they've probably only been going for 45 minutes. And look at that. I mean, this is that's nuts. I gotta highlight that. Magnificent. We're just all circling the bee. I really want that bee. I climbed all that distance. <laughs> and then there's a bunch just stuck over here. Wow, that is a lot of them. Well, let's take a look at their neural nets. I mean, change yaw is directly tied to target yaw input. I mean, that's amazing that they, yeah, we're seeing new neurons that I didn't expect to see. We're seeing beautiful behavior. I need to give them the ability to comprehend each other, kind of. I think that would be a good one. Did he just get attacked? I think he just got attacked. Or maybe he just jumped down and got hurt. I don't know. At this point, I decided to give them a bit more of a challenge, throwing lava in between them and the top. So they'd have to dodge obstacles as they climb the building. It should be possible, being as I gave them the preset neurons for each one of their 10 ray-casted eyes for both stone and for lava. Those same neurons were present for the lava maze experiment, so I was fairly certain it would work, but you never know with these guys. They've done weirder stuff before. Within about 10 to 20 minutes, this happened. Oh, here we go. What is that? What are these? These are boars? Well, I feel like less of them are going to get to the top and swarm. See, the thing is, with this dip here, is that they're not going to be able to see that from with the current setup. That's, oh my god, I got to just shut up about the darn navigation system and just build it. Yeah, but they, they, I mean, the, these guys are technically lucky because a lot of them could end up in there, but that's, this just requires a little bit too much precision right now, the way it's set up, to, like, know to hop that gap. But, I mean, these guys are just swarming. Look at that. I mean, they're probably... Well, yeah, it needs to be harder, but these guys just got up there because of randomness. Like, I almost feel like the lava needs to be simpler but start earlier. So they have to put a little more consideration into it, if that makes sense. Like, I'd like to see more flat, lower-level lava down there because this right here is tough to see for them. Like, they're already up on the ledge. I'd want it to be visible from further out, so they have to, like, try and go around it. Let's start dropping lava out here. And I want to I wanna get rid of this ridge here, because that's needs to be steeper. Why did we want to make it steeper? Like, they're, they're going to overshoot it a ton. Man, wow, these guys are zeroed in up here, though, honestly. We set to work adding more lava and a greater challenge. Also, while giving them more visibility on that top row of lava so there was less chance involved. Then I had an idea. Did you just kill that guy? Wait a minute. I got an idea. I want to try something. I don't know if they can use ladders, but we're going to find out. They may not actually be able to use ladders, but it would be cool if they can. They did actually learn to use the ladders fairly quickly, though the first time it happened, I missed it. Luckily, one of the stream viewers caught it. Typical hog, they 
can in fact use ladders. Wait, did you see them to use a ladder? I I was I've got so many screens going on here. Okay, let's see if this guy does it. Get get go. Come on, Barnacle. Barnacle man. Yes, they can. Cool. Yeah, they definitely can use ladders. We should make this more complex, and I should give them the ability to... Oh, that would be a good place one. We should make them so they can place ladders and give them a certain amount of ladders and then see and make certain areas unscalable without ladders. Ladder land. Shoots and ladders. Eventually, a species named gazelle kind of took over. They were very effective at getting to the top in swarms. This is when I made a somewhat alarming discovery. Look at that. The gazelles are up there. The gazelles figured out the lava. I mean, the chances of them statistically making it that high without, like that many of them that high without getting the lava, I mean, that, that means that they probably have some skill set to dodge lava. Uh, what do we got here? Stone, B, player. So they've learned to target players. That's frightening. That right there. They have, they have figured out, this guy, they've learned the neuron to track us. Players. They've got that on the pitch, at least. They have the yaw to the B and the org entity. That's pretty awesome. That's frightening and amazing, and I love it. I didn't tell them to look for players. I didn't give them that input neuron. They learned that on their own, and it's just frightening. They, are, uh, they have become aware that we are watching them. They can track us, and they can use ladders. They cannot attack the bee, though. That same bee has been here for two, th two hours and some change. But, man, those guys, they cleared that lava like it was nothing. It's true, they had learned to track the pitch and yaw to the nearest player entity. Though I had not told them to do that, I'd kind of forgotten that I had written neat-o. That's an extension of neat AI that adds an observable component that allows these guys to add in new input neurons as they go for things that they've observed in their environment. Very useful in Minecraft since there's so many objects. For more information on that, check out my video on neat-o. Though it might be frightening, in the next video, I should be covering a tutorial on my targeting system that allows them to select their own targets. So instead of us telling them to always track the B with one neuron, it will allow them to select their own targets based on the inputs around them, how much health they have, what they have in their inventory, etc. This should allow them to do more complex behavior, like track diamonds. But that's all for now. As always, please share this as much as you can. If you'd like to, smash that subscribe button or gently press it. Seems a bit gratuitous still. Uh, I'd like to thank my patrons. Uh, you guys are great, and my contributors as well, everybody helping out. Special thanks to East Artica and Damian J, some of the new guys that are on our patron. So take care, and uh, tune into the Friday live stream. This is what happens when you let the patrons into... Uh, <laughs> to your game they steal the bee and wander off with them <laughs>